Wars. Rumors of wars. Global financial meltdown. Famine. Today, Rod Parsley helps you make sense of the prophetic events recorded in your Bible that are becoming an everyday reality. Next, the signs of the times on Breakthrough. Well, it's my joy to welcome you to Breakthrough where we're keeping the fires of revival blazing in order to reach a world in desperate need of a crucified and risen again Savior. The urgency of our times simply demand it, don't they? We're living in a time where the end time news events occur in our world at such an overwhelming, such a rapid fire pace that it's really difficult to even comprehend with our natural minds. You look around, the Arab world is aflame with revolt and upheaval everywhere. Earthquakes are increasing almost on a daily basis, and, and not only on a daily basis, but in frequency and intensity. Super storms, they're now being called, are ravaging the planet with extreme climate swings from one end of the spectrum to the other. There have always been catastrophes in our world, of course, but never ever before have there been so many in such a compressed time frame. We've all been puzzled, haven't we, by the seemingly unprecedented barrage of natural disasters, and it's now official, 2010 was verifiably the worst year, listen to me, on record for natural disasters. In fact, there have been so many occurrences, I can't possibly cover them all on today's broadcast but they'll be scrolling, many of them, right there on the bottom of your screen because it isn't just a coincidence. That's what I've got to get you to understand today. That's, that's what I've got to get to burst on your mind with revelation knowledge. This is not a coincidence that revolutions have broken out in over a dozen countries in the Middle East alone all at the same time. It's not a coincidence that global prices for food products and precious metals are skyrocketing. It is not just a coincidence, my dear friend, that world financial markets, boy, that's on everybody's mind, isn't it? That these markets suddenly seem more vulnerable than at any time in the past decade. In just one day recently, the world stock markets lost $1.2 trillion. None of what's been making the front page of your newspaper read like the back pages of your Bible is happenstance. It, it is not a coincidence for those who believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God. Here's why. Jesus said all of these things would be indisputable signs of the end of the age and that they would increase in frequency, that they would increase in intensity as the earth convulses and careens toward the grand finale of human history. His prophetic pronouncement is recorded in Matthew 24, verses 6 through 8. Here's what your Bible says. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these, said Jesus, are the beginning of sorrows. Now the Greek word for sorrows, right there tucked in that profoundly prophetic passage, literally means birth pain. When a woman begins labor, two things let her know that the hour of birth is rapidly approaching. First, the labor pains become more and more intense. Second, the contractions occur closer together. Jesus uses this metaphor to describe the final events on our planet before his soon and imminent return. The world has already endured some of the most extreme weather yet on record, from floods in Pakistan and China to massive earthquakes in Haiti and Chile. 
We watched forest fires in Russia and typhoons, blizzard, volcanic eruptions, landslides, and droughts take the lives of nearly 300 thousand people worldwide. In 2010, the number of disasters worldwide was 950, and the number killed around the world by nature was more than all those killed by terrorist attacks over the past 40 years. In 2011, natural disasters are breaking records all around our world. Here in America, massive thunderstorms spawned 266 tornadoes in a 24-hour day. In April alone, there were 871 tornadoes shattering every previous record. The worst floods to hit central United States in more than 80 years swallowed up homes, destroyed farms, overran roadways as the mighty Mississippi River swelled to six times its normal width. Australia has experienced the worst flooding in 40 years. Even the secular media has taken note of the increase in earthquakes. History shows that the number of significant earthquakes uh, remain really fairly constant. However, in this new millennium, the number of killer earthquakes, being those 7.0 or higher on the Richter scale, has been increasing worldwide. Look at this. In 2002, there were 11. In 2003, 14. 2004, there were 12. In 05 and 06, there were 10. In 07, there were 17. In 08, there were 12. In 09, there were 17. In 2010, there were 22 7.0 or higher earthquakes recorded in that year alone. And in just the first half of 2011, there have already been 11 earthquakes that register 7.0 or higher, including the 7.8 magnitude earthquake in New Zealand that flattened the entire city of Christchurch and the 9.1 quake in Japan that was so powerful it moved Honshu Island, shifting the earth on its very axis and spawning the monstrous tsunami that destroyed everything in its path. Well, in addition to natural disasters, the Middle East has verifiably erupted in chaos. Oil prices are completely uncertain and no one can predict the future price of oil. The U.S. dollar is in an absolute free fall. The United Nations is warning of severe food shortages worldwide. What we're witnessing, you and I, are the birth pains prophesied of in your Bible of a world in absolute chaotic travail. Now, Jesus said that prior to his return, in fact, in the immediate days prior to his return, the earth itself would experience wars and rumors of wars, famines and earthquakes, unrest, international tension. Jesus said that these things would begin slowly and then increase in frequency, increase in intensity. The closer we got, the closer the world came to his return. One of the major signs that we are so very, very close to the end of this age is the cruel specter of famine. For the first time since 1984, the United Nations has officially declared that famine is rapidly spreading across the continent of Africa. Now, this is putting literally tens of millions of lives at risk in Somalia, Kenya, the New Republic of South Sudan. When people can't even feed their families, they become desperate. Reports of food riots are increasing throughout that region. Now, your Bible declares, hear your Bible today, a leader will arise on the world scene who will hold in his own hand the very power and control of the world's international food supply. 
The only way for you to have any food for yourself or your family will be by giving your allegiance to this supreme leader. And although he will say he's full of compassion, he doesn't really care at all about you. He just wants to control you by controlling the food supply. He'll tell you where you can get food. He'll tell you when you can get food. He'll tell you what you can buy and how much you can have. The alternative is starvation. Right now, the world's population is over 6.5 billion people, and it's estimated to swell, hear me, to 9 billion within the next 40 years requiring an increase in food production by as much as 70%. Just think what will happen when one man has control of the entire world economy as well as the entire world's food supply. Consider these facts to bring the global food crisis that we are now on the precipice of into full focus. One billion people worldwide go to bed hungry every single night. A precious soul on this earth starves to death every 3.6 seconds, and three out of four are children under the age of five. It's unthinkable. Nearly half of the world's population lives on $2 a day. More than half of the world's population. Global food prices rose 40% over the past year. Rising food prices have pushed 44 million people into extreme poverty and devastating hunger. With all the news reports about the turmoil in the Middle East, it's easy to overlook the fact that one of the primary causes for civil unrest in Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, was and is the surge in food prices. Don't hang your head in sorrow. Come on now, lift up your eyes toward the hills from which cometh your help. It's times like this when people's hearts are open to the message of hope and you and I together. This is another telling, telling indicator that we're approaching the end of the age. Scientists have now discovered a super gene, a genetic mutation that can cause virtually any kind of bacteria to become antibiotic resistant. Scientists now confirm that the worldwide spread of UG99 or stem rust, a strain of fungus that attacks wheat, is inevitable and could wipe out, hear me, over 80% of the world's, the world's wheat supply. Fully one-third of everything we eat depends on the pollination of honeybees. A new report reveals disturbing evidence that honeybees are in terminal decline. For the fourth year in a row, more than one-third of colonies right here in the United States have failed to survive, and it's happening globally. Without bees to pollinate them, Yields of many, many vital food crops will drop to historic lows, further worsening food shortages and increasing the dark specter stalking the earth today called famine. Such catastrophes as these would certainly confirm the prophetic warning in the book of the Revelation of John that there's coming a day when an entire day's wage will be required to buy enough bread to sustain oneself. And the record number of natural disasters in 2011 is pushing the world's food supply to the tipping point. The worst flooding in China in over 20 years has destroyed more than one million acres of crops, further elevating food prices. The flooding in Australia, one of the world's major Ex exporters of wheat, sugar, and coal will affect everything from the price of candy to the price of steel. Argentina, a key global provider of soybeans, is experiencing record drought, and the floods in America's Midwest are dramatically impacting the corn supply. 
Reports of a global food crisis at one time certainly seemed far-fetched, but recently the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization announced that the food price index of commodities such as sugar, oils, meat, dairy, cereals has risen for eight consecutive months and hit an all-time high in 2011. While here in America, the increase in crop prices may cut into our monthly budgets internationally, a price hike for staple crops can become an extremely serious and deadly problem. Just a small disruption in food production or distribution can have life-threatening consequences for so many millions living in poverty. Here in the United States, food accounts for approximately 7% of consumer spending. But in developing nations like the New Republic of Sudan, where entire families are struggling to survive on barely a dollar a day, food accounts for up to 70% of a family's income. If anyone came up with an answer for all of this and the myriad of other dilemmas that face the human family during these very, very trying and difficult times, that leader would be hailed as an international savior. Anyone with such brilliant solutions would be regarded as a messiah who would surely usher in a global period of peace and prosperity. The book of Revelation speaks of just such a man. He's the Antichrist, and he's waiting in the wings for the moment when he'll step onto the world stage. But Jesus said in Matthew 24, 6, the end is not yet. We, you and I, we still have a chance while the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ is still shining to preach the truth of God's word to the ends of the earth. There's still time. To...